And we are off. We have Homo Radic jamming for Denver. Slamwise Gamgee jamming for Grand Raggedy. And that is Slamwise out for lead for Grand Raggedy, followed not far behind by Homo Erratic for Denver. We do have a track cut being assigned to someone who has yet to leave the track. Slamwise is coming up for some scoring points along with Homo Erratic not far behind. And a quick call off by Slamwise Gamgee. See how those points shake out. Looks like that is going to be actually two for Rat and Bruising Altitude. And zero for Grand Raggedy with one block in the box. Grand Raggedy blocker reporting to the box after the whistle. Grand Raggedy is going to start one down. Denver having the full complement of blockers. All right, as Susan, as I can see some numbers on some jerseys, I'll let you know who is jamming. Looks like for Denver, we got, I'm seeing two eight, two six. Eight eight, there we go. Eight eight Cosmo with lead jammer status. Grand Raggedy jammer headed to the box on a high block. Cosmo running into some Tough D around that corner. On a scoring pass, just one blocker to beat. And four points for Cosmo on the board. Denver Pivot headed to the box. Grand Raggedy getting all of their blockers back. And Jammer back on the track. Sass looking to either pass a star or get out on their initial. Cosmo going around the outside. And Grand Raggedy Jammer is free on their initial. Four more points for Denver on the board. It looks like we'll be running this jam. Denver pivot released from the box, joining play. Both jammers working really hard on some very tough tripods. Cosmo trying to find some space on the outside but getting shut down. Pivot looking to make some offense for them. Sass being recycled to the back of the pack. And Cosmo's gonna call it for four more points. That will be a 12 to 4 jam. Denver now on the board with 14 points and Grand Raggedy with four. We will be starting this next jam with an empty penalty box for both sides. You'll love to see it. Up on our jammer line, I do see Moose definitely jamming for Denver. Moose has an amazing ability to find the camera wherever it is in the room and have a big smile aimed right at that camera at the best times. Not that I'm jealous. Moose is going up against Freddy Cruiser for Grand Raggedy. Both jammers fighting for position of lead jammer at the top of that pack. Moose working up at the outside of that pack, going up against three of Grand Raggedy's blockers with one hanging back as offense for Freddy Cruiser. But that is going to be Moose definitely as lead jammer for Denver. Bruising altitude coming around for some points. Freddy Cruiser has removed the cap from her head and is looking to make a pass. Moose getting hit on that inside. because going to have to go all the way back behind both packs as Freddy Cruiser is working hard against that Denver tripod looking for a pivot to hand off that cap to Moose working through. And that was a beautiful star pass on behalf of Grand Raggedy. Mangler, now your jammer of record for Grand Raggedy, coming around to make points. And Moose will make a quick call off before Grand Raggedy can add anything else to that board. See how this shakes out. Looks like Moose did get three points, bringing Denver's score to 17 to Grand Raggedy's four. All right, it looks like Vinny for Denver is taking the line as jammer. Each team having a full complement of blockers. At number. And we're off. Denver jammer pushing at the front. Grand Raggedy jammer finding room on the outside. That's going to be Van Whalen with lead jammer. Denver jammer heading to the box on a cut. Now we have a power jam for Grand Raggedy. Perfect opportunity 
A perfect opportunity to close that gap. Blocker 1-6 for Denver headed to the box on two penalties. We'll be serving a full minute. Van Whalen being told to call it from the bench, going to ice the jammer and one blocker in the box, setting up the jam in Grand Raggedy's favor for the next one. Rat row. Rat row. 24 minutes, 28 seconds left in this first half of the second game of the day. Looks like we do have a Grand Raggedy blocker joining in the penalty box. It is still going to be a power start for Grand Raggedy, whose number I can't see from here. Sorry. So one blocker piece in that penalty box. Denver Jammer also starting in the penalty box. Looks like it is going to be number two five from Grand Raggedy. Pushing towards that front. And that is gonna be another track cut for Vinny. You do have to enter the track behind everybody in order to legally re-enter. So Vinny will return to the penalty box. Slamwise Gamgee is lead on a power jam. Four Grand Raggedy does have three blockers on the track to help them out with some offense going up against three Denver blockers as they push to the inside for Slamwise to get some points. We do have a penalty being called on a Grand Raggedy blocker as another one rejoins the track. Slamwise around for four points. Making that ever so fun power jam arm motion as Denver takes off running to try and protect those points. Slamwise blasting through on the outside. Pushing through for another four points for Grand Raggedy. And that is going to release Denver's jammer, Vinny, from the penalty box as their pivot leaves them to go to the penalty box. That's two Denver blockers in the box right now to Grand Raggedy's one. Vinny working on their initial, pushing through and tiptoeing through and does make it through on their initial as Slamwise is through for four more points and calls off that jam. Icing three Denver blockers in that box. Grand Raggedy starting in a really good position with three Denver blockers in the box. Two still seated. I'm bad at math, but those numbers aren't great. You know what, Chip? We missed a lead change. Oh, no! All right, Grand Raggedy coming around, scoring points. Grand Raggedy is gonna have to pay attention to that no pack. Denver blocking that jammer up front. Grand Raggedy is going to have to move forward to maintain pack. Sass coming around again for some more points. And is gonna call it off with one Denver blocker still in the box, setting up the next jam with an advantage. You love that. I love that. Less big. people to fight through. Big. Oh, we're big fans. As jammers who like to bust through, we're big fans. All right. Looks like we do have Rat on the line for Denver, facing off against a jammer I can't see. Four Grand Raggedy blockers on the track, contending against Denver's three. Rat will push. Freddie Cruiser out of the way in her attempt to get through, and she does get through as lead jammer for Denver Roller, but that is Ho Erratic, formerly of Minnesota, blasting through as lead jammer. Freddie having that power cycle back all the way to the back of that pack as Rat is coming around for a scoring pass. And Freddie making quick work of that initial, now coming around for some points of their own as Rat cuts quickly to the inside, is asking their teammates to come forward to protect those points and calls off the jam. Smart move on Rat's part to protect those points. Rat getting four points of their own to go towards Denver. Still Grand Raggedy leading by six points. I do believe that is Cosmo headed to the jammer line for Denver. I know there's a Grand Raggedy jammer there somewhere. And we're off. Denver blocker released from the box. All right, and Cosmo is given lead jammer status. We're watching Van Whalen fight their way through on a tripod of Denver blockers. 
Cosmo doing a very, if you're old school derby, you remember the baseball slide. Very applicable in this situation. No thanks. Cosmo able to get four points on the board for Denver. Finding some room on the outside. Putting four more points on the board for Denver. Grand Raggedy Pivot released from the box and joining their friends. And we have a star pass. Booty Fed is now the jammer of record for Grand Raggedy. And Cosmo's gonna call it off before Grand Raggedy has an opportunity to score. That's gonna be 11 points for Denver. Zero points for Grand Raggedy, making this a five point game. 36 points for Denver, 31 for Grand Raggedy. That's pretty close. If my math is right, that's pretty close. Do you know what else that means? Another lead change. Lead change, lead change. With an empty penalty box. Oh my god. Looks like Slamwise Gamgee on Grant, line for Grand Raggedy versus Moose, definitely, for Denver. Full contingency of blockers for both teams as both jammers vie for that lead jammer position. Both jammers now on the outside trying to push through. Slamwise coming to the inside with some help from their friends. They've got two more to beat at the very top. Now three, now four blockers coming up from Denver with one more now to beat on that outside. It is going to be Slamwise Gamgee for lead for Grand Raggedy. Moose ripping off that cap as they have to recycle all the way back to the back of that pack. Slamwise coming up for some points. Moose still working on her initial pass against this hard. Ooh, that was a big old hit. And Slamwise busting through for points. Waiting to hear a penalty. It looks like we do have a penalty called on a Connecticut blocker. Star pass engaged now over to Speed Cat, but Slamwise calls it up before Speed Cat can add any points to Denver's board. Let's see what Slamwise came up with. I don't know why it's a hard name to say. Slamwise Gamgee. I got it. I'll get there. La, 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 la. Four <laughs> points. <laughs> Four points on the board for Slamwise Gamgee, bringing that score to. Should be 35 if my math is correct. Uh, we look like we're. Oh, Whoa! there they go. That is a one point game. I love this. All right, and we're well into jam 10 of the first period. We have Sassa Thrash for Grand Raggedy and Vinny for Denver. And that's going to be Sassa Thrash with lead, but Vinny is hot on her heels. We'll see if we're able to score any points and if Grand Raggedy is going to run it or call it. And it looks like Denver was able to score one and Grand Raggedy scored one. So we're still a one point game. Oh, looks like Miller Light changed his mind and awarded two points for the blocker in the box. Sneaky points. Ah, uh, forgot about the blocker in the box. Thanks, Miller, keeping us on our toes. One Connecticut blocker standing in that penalty box to start off this jam 10. 16 minutes left of the first half of the second game of the hand. Looks like that is Yolita Applebaum out for lead jammer for Denver. With Freddy Cruiser coming around on the initial pass as well, Yolita now in the pack trying to score some points. And that is a clear call off from that bench. Looks like points are going to be even on that jam. Two points apiece for both jammers. Bringing our score, 40 for Denver, 38 for Grand Raggedy. A two-point game now. We're keeping it close. Yes, we are. As people not skating, we are keeping it very close. We're working very hard. Or hardly working. I'm standing here. It's exhausting. All right, Van Whalen on the line for Grand Raggedy and Homo Erratic, lovingly called Rat, former of Minnesota Roller Derby, is jamming for Denver and got lead jammer status. Van Whalen removing the cap, looking for that pass. Pivot, 6-6, six, six, was there and ready, but does not need it. A little small little apex jump for Rat which gets her all four points. Now we got a little bit of a, a lead here. Not much can change. Four points for Denver, zero points for Grand Raggedy. And we've still got 15 minutes left in this half, so a lot of time to make some moves. 
You'd say we're halfway through the half? One could say that, a quarter of the way through.
For those of you who are really good at math, the combined this. total was a 40-point jam split between the two teams. We see Van Whalen on the line for Grand Raggedy going against Yolita Applebaum, which I do believe this is our first time seeing Yolita on the line for Denver. Denver blocker heading to the box. Grand Raggedy looking for the star pass, but was able to get out without having to pass the panty. Looks like Denver is going to be running it in order to get their blocker out of the box. Van Whalen running up against some defense at the top. And Grand Raggedy out for four, for four more points. Looks like three more on the board for Denver, making that a seven point jam for them. And Grand Raggedy with four points. It's gonna be 91 Denver to 64 Grand Raggedy. I don't do math. Oh my God, I have Cheez-Its in my mouth, hold on. Okay, we're Cheez-It free, sorry friends. One Denver blocker standing in the penalty box. Seven minutes and 57 seconds left in this first half of the second game of hand. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I don't know what happened. Are we gonna see an illegal procedure penalty being assessed at the moment? Look like Denver had four blockers on the track, forgetting about the one in the box. Happens to the best of us. Oh. Don't you? Oh, they are calling one off. And Gay headed to the box, serving a captain's no. penalty. Little did you know that if something happens weird, like fielding too many blockers, the captain gets the penalty by default. This is why I don't ever want to be captain. All right, we've got Rat on the line for Denver, taking on Slamwell Eyes Gamgee for Grand Raggedy. Two Denver blockers on the track versus Connecticut's four. And Slamwise working towards the top and will be the lead jam for Grand Raggedy. Rat still working towards the back of that pack, making some moves as they come up the middle. We do have another Denver blocker heading back to the pack and a rat on a beautiful toe stop on the inside, but he's gonna go back just in case. No need to get a cut track as Slamwise comes in for four points on their first scoring pass. Denver's gotta let them go at the top. That is four for Grand Raggedy. Rat still working on the back against all four and tricks a star pass and decides to go up the inside instead. Now out on their initial sneaky. Slamwise working to get on that outside to get some more points. That will be a quick call off from Slamwise before Rat can come up and ruin that score. That will be eight on the board for Grand Raggedy bringing their score up to 72-91 for Denver. It's getting closer. I still can't do that math. I Nine, was gonna ask. 19. 19. Woo! We're so smart. <laughs> I even went to college, she whiz. Cosmo on the line for Denver, Sassa Thrash for Grand Raggedy. Cosmo having a good game today, putting a lot of points on the board. Fighting with that tripod up front and gets lead jammer. Grand Raggedy blocker headed to the box for a forearm penalty. All right, and we see a successful star pass. Grand Raggedy pivot, now the jammer. Cosmo not willing to risk Grand Raggedy putting any more points on the board, decides to call it. Four more points for Denver. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe they let us talk into these things for this long? Absolutely crazy. Okay, friendos, we've got one Connecticut box blocker hanging in the box. We've got Moose definitely on the track. I'm only gonna say her name like that from now on. Moose on the track taking on Freddy Cruiser for Connecticut. Both going up as Moose sneaks on the outside for a lead there for Denver, creeping up the outside with them, toe stops. Freddy Cruiser has now removed the cap and is fighting against three Denver blockers. And a beautiful star pass to the pivot for Grand Raggedy, meaning Mangler is now your jammer. Moose coming through for four points. An empty penalty box, just kidding. Gay now coming back to the penalty box, prove me wrong. 
Mangler coming in for some points of their own as Moose comes in for a second scoring pass against the full contingency of Connecticut blockers. Will hit the inside and try and sneak up. Oh, beautiful work, but does have to go back behind Connecticut as Mangler is working up top. Four points on the board now for Grand Raggedy on a star pass. Moose working hard on that second scoring pass and will be told by their bench to call it off. Leaving one Denver blocker hanging out in the box. That is going to be eight points on the board for Denver, four for Grand Raggedy. I see that Slamwise is making their way back to the jammer line. Also having a good day, putting a lot of points on the board for Grand Raggedy. Everybody's looking hot in this temperature. All right, it looks like Vinny is on the line for Denver. Slamwise getting that lead jammer status very quickly. And Denver jammer out on their initial. Slamwise making it through the pack with little resistance, putting four points on the board. Looks like the bench is telling them to run it. Slamwise fighting real hard to get more points out, but Denver Jammer also out putting four points up. Looks like we're still going to be running it. Denver Jammer in, was able to make it on the inside almost undetected. Slamwise fighting against the tripod of Denver blockers. Taking their four points and going home. Well, not yet. We still have a whole nother half. Going home. However, it is 111 to 88. I love repeating numbers. Do that math. Don't make I me do math. I, I see it. I see steam Three, rising from 23? your eyeballs. 23? Sure. That sounds right. I don't know. 23 point game? I don't know. I'm just a girl. I don't know. We have one blocker apiece in the penalty box. That is going to be Yolita Applebaum. Jamming for Denver against Van Whalen for Grand Raggedy. Excellent names all around. And Yolita tiptoeing up that outside to become lead jammer for Denver Roller Derby. And a beautiful star pass once again on behalf of Grand Raggedy making Mangler jammer. This is Mangler's third or fourth time jamming. Yolita tiptoeing through on that inside, being told to run it. Get some more points for Denver as Mangler comes through on that outside looking for points of their very own, being held up by Denver's tripod. Denver's last blocker just being released from that penalty box. Really coming up against the full contingency of Grant Raggedy's blockers. Getting some offensive help on the inside there as they are fighting through. This will be Yolita's second scoring pass compared to Mangler's first. Yolita is through now. Eight points on the board for Denver Roller Burby. Burby? Gee whiz. Denver Bowler Burby. Mangler fighting through. We have a penalty being assessed to a Denver blocker. They will head to the penalty box. Mangler working hard against that Denver tripod up top. Against the Denver two wall up top. A little bit of jammer on jammer oopsies. And you'll being hit once again to the outside, coming all the way back in. Oh, just saw Denver pull their own blocker back in before falling out. I love it when it's blocker on blocker assists. Oh. Couple hits to the inside, Mangler will have to go back. Yolita is free and through for a third scoring pass. Being told to keep going, we will have a penalty assessed to a Denver blocker. Coming back to the penalty box, Mangler now through for four points of their own, bringing their score up to 92 for Grand Raggedy, still being told to run it. He is lead jammer. There are only 18 seconds left in this jam, but she will go ahead and call the jam. Point shakeout to be four for Grand Raggedy and 12 for bruising altitude. Woo. Yeah, that hurt to watch. That was I'm tired. a lot of work on everybody's part. Um, I better go home. Looks like we are going to be taking an official timeout as Bibbidi Bobbidi Boom talks to the Grand Raggedy bench. Let's take another peek at the penalties. Denver blocker, 1-6, able to pick up one more, sitting on five. See a little more penalties on the board with a Denver skater at three and a Grand Raggedy skater at three as well. Everybody else either has one or zero. 
Only one skater in trouble at this point. We see a Grand Raggedy blocker reporting to the box after the whistle. So each, each team will be starting with three blockers. There must have been a super secret conversation that happened at the Grand Raggedy bench that only Bibbidi Bobbidi Boom knows about. Ooh, this half is almost over. The half's almost over. Look. Ooh, jeez. Ooh, look at that. 41 seconds left. That is, means it's almost the perfect time to go and check out our food truck that's parked outside. Fire Pot Food Truck serving pierogies, polo sausages, cheese steaks, and other tasty snacks. I said cheese cake, and that wasn't true. Ooh, Wrong. also a good option, but not out there at the moment. Sorry. Looks like we are still in our official timeout. We got to double check our spreadsheets, cross reference, power trip looking unenthused with our antics. I was just informed by an inside source that there was a delay of game penalty called because the team, one of the teams did not have their door closed on their bench. We are in a hockey arena and those doors you have to be latched shut, which is hard. Rat finding some room on the outside, getting declared lead jammer, but slam wise, hot on her heels. This is gonna be a jammer race. We'll see if they're gonna run it or try to get points and call it. And Rat will call it. We will see, it is a zero, zero jam, but both blockers standing in the box. That's how quick the jam was that nobody could serve their penalty. That's how fast it was. Very fast. Looks like we are now gonna have a timeout for Grand Raggedy. Which is a good strategy, Grand Raggedy being able to put up points on the board recently. With only six seconds left in the period, they needed that timeout to be able to have one more Jam! Just what you want when you're tired. Yes. More jam. Another good thing to check out during our halftime is going over to our tattoo station. We're the coolest tournament because we have not one, but two tattoo artists here in house doing flash and custom work. Go and say hi, go put your name down, give them some money. They do excellent work. Whoopsie is already sporting a new tattoo from them. Do we match? Minnesota now? Oh my gosh, cute. I have a Minnesota with a loon in it. Wow. <laughs> okay. I can't do the loon sound. That's I'll the best I can do. I'll pay you money to never do that again. Well, now I'm going to do it all the time. Yeah, I kind of asked for that. <laughs> Both teams are taking a chance to chat, as is the best team, the ref team, the team that never loses, taking a second to gather their thoughts on the track. It's been a busy half for them. A lot of penalties, a lot of points, a lot of smiles. Also, if you have not heard, later this evening as the temperatures rise, we will have an ice cream truck coming later this afternoon so you can cool down and still enjoy some derby. I did not know that was happening. That's amazing. Insider information. Am I not an insider? All right, looks like we are going to start the next jam, but the official review, Grand Raggedy was looking for a skating out of bounds penalty on the Denver Jammer. They do not retain the review, AKA meaning they didn't see it. All right, sorry, getting caught up now. Grand Raggedy was able to get lead jammer status in this jam. Cosmo finding space on the outside. Interested to see what Grand Raggedy is going to do with this situation. <laughs> and a Denver blocker is going to head to the box on a low block for that last hit. I definitely gasped into the microphone at that. Sorry, friends. Yeah, when you're going fast, it's fast. Welcome back, friends. We are now ready to start off the second half of the second game of the second day of hand. Got that all by myself. Score as we see it is 129 Denver, 96 Grand Raggedy. 
Rat is on the track for Denver, making quick work of that, becoming lead jammer. Slamwise Gamgee, though, not far behind, just finished up on their initial. Both jammers are out to four points. We do have one blocker apiece in the penalty box now that Grand Raggedy Blocker has been released. Rat tipping up the outside, calls off the jam. Let's see how the points shake out. Looks like that's going to be three for Denver, zero for Grand Raggedy. We do still have Denver Pivot hanging out in that penalty box. Both jammers pushing up on the inside. We have Sassa Thrash for Grand Raggedy taking on Cosmo for Denver. Cosmo taken to the outside and brought down. Looks like we're gonna have the Grand Raggedy Pivot report to the penalty box as Cosmo breaks free on their initial is Lee Jammer. Sassa Thrash also free on their initial. Cosmo coming up fast on that inside for some points. And we'll call it off before Grand Raggedy has a chance. Also in that moment, sending another Grand Raggedy blocker to that penalty box. They will actually, number 6-6 six, six will leave the penalty box, stay on the track. They do have a penalty to serve, but because there are two Grand Raggedy blockers already sitting in the box, they have to wait until the, one of those seats becomes available before they can return and serve their penalty. Looks like we're going to take an official timeout. Checking in, making sure everyone knows what's going on. You left me. I'm back now. But you left me by myself. Hi. 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 All right, what did I miss? Give me the lowdown. Uh, the, the half started. Woo! And there was penalties and points and smiles and love and hugs and all sorts of good fun stuff. I forgot how to drink a bubbly water. That's cool. Looks like we're on an official timeout at the moment. Boom, giving the go-ahead to get things going. All right, and Moose out there for Denver, and Freddy Cruiser for Grand Raggedy. Grand Raggedy with lead jammer status. Didn't know it, thought that they got a penalty. So recycled all the way back, even though they had, at that time, didn't have a penalty, but they have a penalty now. Do you know what that means when the lead jammer goes to the box? Two minute jam. I hope everybody's ready for two minutes. I am not. All right, Moose making quick work, but getting forced to the outside. Well, Grand Raggedy going to be sending one to the box. They bridged back too far, breaking the pack. Moose getting forced out to the outside and recycled back. Freddie released from the box and coming in hot. And Moose through for four points. Freddie fighting against four Denver blockers, pushing their way to the front. And Moose is through for four more points. Freddie now on their scoring pass. Reminder, nobody is lead jammer, so this will go the entire 27 seconds that are left. Another Grand Raggedy blocker headed to the box. Moose putting four more points on the board for Denver. Freddie fighting hard against 777, who is going to get a penalty for all her efforts. Denver blocker headed to the box. Freddie able to make it through for four points of their own. Moose hit the 20 point mark. I think this is the largest jam of the tournament. There was a 23 point jam. 
Oh, earlier. I stand Sorry. corrected. That's a burst your bubble. That's okay. I don't pretty mind. close. Still amazing. Yes. 20 points for Denver. Four for Grand Raggedy, making this a 56-point game because it's easy math. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. We love easy math around here. Looks like we are going to have a blocker apiece starting in that penalty box. Vinny on the line for Denver going up against Van Whalen for Grand Raggedy. Taking on three blockers apiece, pushing up towards the middle. Vinny making some headway at the front of the pack, and Van Whalen cruising on the inside. Now Vinny with two to beat for Grand Raggedy, one to beat, and is now lead jammer for Denver coming around on that initial. Van Whalen still working against that three blockers for Denver with a little bit of help from her friend as Vinny comes up for a scoring pass against Grand Raggedy. Tiptoeing up the outside, but is going to get pushed back towards the middle. Van Whalen has now taken off that jammer cap and a beautiful star pass to Mangler for Grand Raggedy. Now your jammer for the rest of the jam. Vinny threw for four points for Denver and is being told by her bench to call it before Mangler can ruin the fun. Bringing our score. 160 for Denver, 100 for Grand Raggedy. Still easy math, 60 points ahead. Denver just extending that lead four points at a time if they can do it. Trying to keep Grand Raggedy down in the low hundreds. Again, 24 minutes left. Plenty of time to do weird, some weird stuff. Plenty of time. Oh my goodness, plenty of time. Oh my Lanta. Oh my gosh. All right, we see Yolita Applebaum on the line for Denver at the front of the pack. And Slamwise Gamgee at the back pushing hard against the Denver, I don't need, four pod? 4D? And the star pass is out to Lucy Morals, who is now the jammer for Grand Raggedy. Looking at the bench, Denver is going to run this. This is a pivots nightmare. We really hope that you just call it the second that we get out of the pack. Lucy going through, scoring points and getting a penalty on a Denver blocker who is reporting to the box. Yolita out for four more points on the board for Denver. Looking at their bench. Looks like they're probably still gonna keep running it as Yolita is now scoring again. And Lucy is stuck in the pack. All right, four more points on the board for Denver. Small pile up in turn four. Lucy getting recycled back to the pack. Giving herself some extra space so she can get some speed coming into that pack. And it's going to work for her. Lucy out for four points for Grand Raggedy. 26 seconds left in the jam. We'll see if Denver decides to keep going. Looking at the bench, they are going to keep running it on Lucy. May as well. Lucy is again scoring points. 10 seconds left. We'll see how many more points each team is able to get. And Denver putting four more points, but Grand Raggedy putting an additional three on the board. This is going to be a 24-point jam for Denver. That's going to be the biggest one yet. And seven points for Grand Raggedy. We got a Denver blocker in the box, giving Grand Raggedy a advantage at this time. Four versus three. I know that math. Oh, just kidding. Looks like we are going to have an official timeout. Let the officials chat. Now is an excellent time to rehydrate. It's starting to get hot. It's gonna be hot later. Drink some water. High five your friends. Did you know Thank you. that each team gets three timeouts during a game and an official review each half? However, officials get as many as they want. Good for them, honestly. Good for them. They work really hard. They should have a break. Honestly, we should make it more complicated because then they take official timeouts and then we all get a timeout. If it's any more complicated, I cannot play this sport. <laughs> I'm out. I have to do like water polo or something. I cannot learn any more rules for this game. <laughs> Did you know you can't just go out of bounds and then come back in? I had no idea. They keep sending me the box for this little track cut thingy. Never heard of her. <laughs> Sounds like a made up rule. Thank you. 
The refs did not agree. Uh-oh, Jammer for Denver headed to the box. If we ever figure out what that penalty is, we'll let you know. So illegal procedure being called on the Jammer. Don't know. This will be then a power start for Stassa Thrash and Grand Raggedy. Grand Raggedy also has all four blockers on the track. Denver does have one blocker sitting in that penalty box. No pack means they've got to let her go at the top. So that is Sassa Thrash as lead jammer on a power jam for Grand Raggedy. Gives them a chance to put some points on that board. They've got their blockers waiting patiently to give some offense in this power jam. Beautiful offense given as they're trying to hold back one of the Denver blockers. Sassa Thrash pushing towards the top of that pack. Denver Jammer has been released from the penalty box along with their blocker friend and she's going to make some moves to try and get out on that initial pass. You'll lead to Applebaum quickly making moves with a Grand Raggedy Jammer coming back in for a second scoring pass. Four points in the body for Sassa Thrash so far. You'll lead to Applebaum is out on her initial pass looking to make some points for Denver. One Denver blocker still is sitting in the penalty box. And Sassa Thrash pushing hard towards the pop of that pack, trying to get through on that inside line. Now two Denver blockers to contend with as Yo is hanging out with all four Grand Raggedy blockers in the back, but does make quick work of them on the outside and is through for four points for Denver. Gain now released from the penalty box. Both teams at full capacity, four blockers, as Thrash calls off that jam. Leaving an empty penalty box for the next jam. Point shake out to eight points for Grand Raggedy, bring their score up to 115. Four on the board for Denver, bring their score up to 188. Chip. What up? What is your most useless fact about Minnesota that you know? Oh my God, putting me on the spot. We have the world's largest candy store that I don't think is actually the world's largest. It is really big though. It's massive. All right. Cosmo for Denver out and lead jammer right away. Freddy Cruiser still fighting in the pack against Denver blockers. Cosmo coming around for their skating. Cosmo forced out of bounds and recycled back. Cruiser out on their initial. We'll see if Denver is going to keep running it. Nope, they are going to call it, keeping Grand Raggedy at 115 points and bringing their lead to 192 points. I audibly gasped at that fall. I know, it was a backwards kapooey. Good for you, Cosmo. I would have cried. I would have lost it. But we do have an empty penalty box, which is lovely. We've got Moose definitely on the line for Denver going up against a jammer that I can't see because my vantage point is bad. Sorry. 19 minutes, 27 seconds left in the second half of the game. That is going to be Van Whalen for Grand Raggedy, pushing up right behind Moose and is going to be lead jammer with Moose definitely hot on her heels. It is a jammer race. I wish we still have all four blockers from each team on the track moving forward so they can protect their points from the jammer, but Grand Raggedy is coming up, trying to hit at least one point before they can call the jam, stopping Moose from in her tracks from scoring any points, and I believe does so. Let's see how the points shake out. That is a big old goose egg for both teams. Denver holding Grand Raggedy scoreless, Grand Raggedy holding Denver scoreless. I could tell that was a fast jam because you turned into an auctioneer. <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me. I'm never announcing again. All right, we have Vinny for Denver on the line. Slamwise jamming for Grand Raggedy. Both jammers fighting hard. Denver pushing the tripod to the front. A lot of chaos going here. Either you love it or you hate it. Slamwise out on the outside and it's declared lead jammer. I hear a lot of whistles. Grand Raggedy pivot headed to the box on a track cut penalty. Vinny closing that space between them and Slamwise. Denver being able to score all four and Grand Raggedy scoring zero. Not the way you want to see that jam go, but sometimes you got to take a gamble. A gamble. We do have Grand Raggedy's out in that penalty box. We are on jam nine, 17 minutes. 
excuse me, 17 minutes, 35 seconds left in this half. I'm going to not be an auctioneer this time. Eh, we'll see. Who knows? Sassa Thrash jamming for Grant Raggedy going up against Yolita Applebaum for Denver. Yo is pushing towards the front with one blocker to beat. And is going to be lead jammer for Denver is Yolita Applebaum as Sassa Thrash not far behind with one blocker to beat. And is clear also on their initial as well. We do will have a penalty being called on a Grand Raggedy blocker for a back block. Yo working on the inside trying to score some points as Sassa Thrash also comes up. Looking for some points of their own. Yolita will be through for four. Sassathrash working against all four of those Denver blockers, coming up with some offense for help. But here comes Yolita Applebaum looking for four more points, hitting that outside and just barely hitting that outside and having to go all the way back behind all of their friends. Sorry, buddy. Do have that raggedy blocker standing in the penalty box. Sassathrash now through for four points of their own. Yolita making another four and quickly calling it off, but does empty the penalty box, meaning everyone will get all of their friends on the track with them. 204 is that score now for Bruising Altitude. 119 for Grand Raggedy. All right, Cosmo back on the line for Denver. Each team having four blockers apiece, starting at full strength. And Grand Raggedy sending Freddy Cruiser to take on Cosmo, who's able to get Lee Jammer on the outside, barely keeping that wheel in. Cruiser going for the star pass, but was able to get out on her own. Cosmo threw for four points, and they're going to call it. We like to call that a hit it and quit it. I was going to make a joke, but I can't. Was it the direct eye contact? Yeah, it really was. 15 minutes, 28 seconds left in this half of this second game. Up next, we're going to have a mixer at 2 p.m., which will be super fun. Mix of Minnesota windchill, other Minnesota skaters. Great time. Penalty box is? The schedule says it's a junior's mixer, but it's an adult one. It's an adult's mixer. Penalty box is currently empty for Van Whalen and Moose, definitely, as they battle their... Opposite pods on the track, four people apiece. A lot of people to battle, no thank you. Moose getting a little bit of offensive help from Gate of Reckoning. Both used to play for Minnesota. Bye guys. Moose now trying up the inside. Van Whalen is going from the middle to the out, and Moose is now out as lead jammer. Sneaking up that inside line. Van Whalen also now going to be released on their initial pass as well. Moose coming up, score some points. Penalty box still empty, which is a little surprising in this game. Moose coming up. Cutting from the outside into the in and is going to call off the jam as both jammers go flying to that outside line. I don't think Waylon could have gotten shorter on that bean dip on the outside. Not unless you go negative space, yeah. I try that, my knees say good luck. Denver getting three points on that jam. Grand Raggedy with one. Looks like Slamwise Gamgee back on the line for Grand Raggedy. And for Denver, I'm waiting for the scoreboard to tell me who it is. It's Vinny! Vinny is jamming for Denver. We have a Denver blocker headed to the box on an illegal procedure. And Slamwise bowling over Rat to get lead jammer status. But Vinny is out right behind them. We'll see. Again, we've seen this before. I got tired. Oh, Slamwise not willing to make that, that gamble and calls it off before anybody can score points. Denver going to start with one blocker in the box. Stop making eye contact with me. Oh, and we are going to have a... Time out for Denver, she said, assertively. Denver, maybe. Biz going out to do some track maintenance. Oh, bye, Biz. Oh, thank you, volunteers. You're the best. Oh, my stars. Would you like a bar? I thought you said only stars. 
like a weird website version of All Stars. I don't know what you think is happening here. So much and so little all at the same time. They're not going to ask us back to do this. 13 minutes and six seconds left in this second half. 211 is the score for Denver. 120 is the score for Grand Raggedy. Whoops, going to check in with some penalty stuff. All right, our penalty checkup. We are looking at Denver with one skater sitting on six, two skaters sitting on four, and then Grand Raggedy has one skater at five and one skater at four. So we're getting close, but there's 13 minutes left. So True. plenty of time to keep it clean and still do a lot of work out there. Yeah. Looks like we're going to have Yoli on the jam line for Denver. Oh, you thought. Just kidding. Now what are we doing? An official timeout. Yeah. Like I said, they get as many as they want. For fun. Excellent time if you're here in the venue to rehydrate because it's hot. Just kidding. You're now out of time. No rehydrating for you. Denver's still going to start with one blocker in the box. Yoli on the jam line for Denver versus Sassa Thrash for Grand Raggedy pushing against three Denver blockers at the top getting a little bit of offensive help and beautiful offensive work does get Sassa Thrash through for Lee Jammer for Grand Raggedy Yoli working against one and now two blockers left up top for Grand Raggedy as Yoli is pushing through and that will be a penalty on Grand Raggedy's pivot as Sassa Thrash enters the pack on a scoring pass. Yoli is now clear on their initial. Going to come around some, for some points of her own as Sassa Thrash goes up the outside and now has to contend with two Denver blockers as Yoli comes up and calls off the jam. Unfortunately, leaving their pivot in the box. That's okay. You'll see each other soon. They were able to shave off a lot of time on that penalty, so I'm assuming the pivot's going to get out soonish. Probably. Soonish, yeah. But that was three points on the board for Grand Raggedy, bringing it up to 123. All right, going into jam 15 of period two, we got Cosmo on the line for Denver and Freddy Cruiser for Grand Raggedy. Both jammers still fighting. A lot of bodies in the way, making it difficult for everyone. And Cruiser finds some space on the outside, but Cosmo right behind them. Grand Raggedy blocker headed to the box. Is Cruiser gonna be able to score some points before calling it off? Uh, each team getting two points. What'd you call that, a goose egg? A goose egg. I'm sure that sounds really nice on the stream if we just go goose egg a lot. Goose egg. Your turn to do math. What's the score differential? Uh, 112 points. Shut up, is that right? Dang it, what is it? I don't know, I panicked. Leave me alone, I don't know how to do math. That could be right. All right, we've got Van Whalen on the Line for Grand Raggedy going up against Moose, definitely for Denver. Moose running up that outside line to get Lee Jammer for Denver. Van Whalen, though, not far behind. Also clear on their initial. We do still have one uh, Grand Raggedy blocker in that penalty box as Moose comes up for that initial scoring pass. And nice call off. Gets the points. Gets out. One point for Grand Raggedy. Thank you, Miller. And four points for Denver on that jam. I think it's a 91 point game. Ooh, calculator, calculator. I do believe that is Vinny back on the line for Denver, along with Slam Wise game. for Grand Raggedy. Grand Raggedy has one blocker standing in the box. Vinny doing work at the top of the pack. Slam wise trying to get through before getting recycled. And gets eaten back up, up top by number one seven of Denver. Vinny coming in for a scoring pass. Seven seven for Grand Raggedy headed to the box on a high block. 
Slamwise removing the helmet cover, looking for a star pass. Star pass complete, booty fet, now your jammer of record. Vinny still fighting to get their points, getting told by the bench to call it. That is gonna keep Grand Raggedy scoreless and four more points for Denver. It's a 99 point game, 99. It's on sale, 99. Oh my God. Eight minutes and 56 seconds left in this game, you little weirdo. Jam 17, we are starting with one Grand Raggedy blocker in the penalty box. Jammer is conferring on the line. You'll love to see a little bit of Jammer chat. Sass Thrash versus Yoli to Applebaum. Yoli pushing towards the front. Two Grand Raggedy blockers left. Now down to one Grand Raggedy blocker. Making them work for it. And Yoli is going to be lead for Denver. Sass Thrash has taken off that cap, is looking for a pass or just looking to get out of there. And a beautiful pass from Sass Thrash over to Mangler. Now the Jammer for the bazillionth time in this game. Yoli is trying to get through on a scoring pass where Mangler can come through and get some points of their own, pushing hard and calling it off. Looks like there's going to be three for Denver and zero for Grand Raggedy, and the penalty box is now clear. Yeah, you work on those cheese its You take a second. So the math is going to get easier for us now. It's a 102-point game. Because it's all even. All right. Going into Jam 19, Freddy Krueger on the line for Grand Raggedy. Cosmo, which I feel like Cosmo's been out there every third at least. At least. Oop. Got a little collision on the outside. Oh, I just said oh. Did I just oh on the mic? Oop. Freddy fighting hard against a tripod of Denver blockers, not making it easy for them to get through. Cosmo coming around for a scoring pass. Cruiser has the panty in hand looking for that pass. Blocker 7-7 seven, seven, turned jammer. Now coming around for some points. Grand Raggedy blocker reports to the box. Looking at the bench, it looks like they are going to run this on Lucy Morals, which we've seen them do that to her before. It is exhausting after taking a pass and then jamming for two minutes. No thanks. Lucy putting points on the board, though, coming around for another pass. Cosmo smiling as getting pushed out and recycled back. We'd like to see that. Keep the positivity going. Psycho released from the box and returning to their friends on the track to help keep Cosmo at bay. Lucy fighting hard against a tripod of Denver blockers in the back. Watching Cosmo get recycled all the way back by Grand Raggedy 0-2. Oh, you know why they didn't call it? Nobody's lead jammer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Sorry. a no pass, no penalty type of scenario. Got it. I missed that part. I'm so glad we're doing this together. That's the only rule I know. We got about five seconds left. Is Cosmo going to get back to the pack in time to score some more points? You got it, Cosmo. Oh. Oh, everyone snuggle on the floor together. Gets one point. However, Lucy able to put four more points on the board for Grand Raggedy, making that almost an even jam. However, Denver just gets one more. One more. That is a lot of work for one point. Yeah. Score as it sits now is 237 for Bruising Altitude, 134 for Grand Raggedy Roller Derby. Oh, no. Cosmo headed to the penalty box. We got a official review. Cosmo getting assessed a penalty at the end of that jam. There was a collision on the other side of the track that we could uh, not see very well. I'm wondering if it has to do with that. It's because I had my eyes closed. Once again, shout out to some of our sponsors, 888 and 187 Killer Pads for keeping us safe on the track. If we did the sport without pads, everyone could play one game and then they'd be done because all their bones would be broken. 
Five minutes and 32 seconds left in this half. Again, after this, at 2 p.m., there will be a mixer. Do not be fooled when it says junior mixer. No children, all adults. And if you stick around after the mixer, you can see MNRDB, which is Minnesota, take on Denver C. And then Grand Reggedy is going to play Connecticut. And our final game of the evening is going to be Minnesota A against Denver B. And that's us. That, that's us? That's and our game. Also them who are also playing right game. now. So, gossip from that official review, Denver had requested a blocking a down skater on the white jammer. That official review was not retained. Thank you so much, Manny. So we will start with Denver's jammer, Cosmo, in the box. It's okay. Cosmo's worked hard this game. Take a second. Take a seat. Other than that, though, our penalty box is clear. All four blockers from each team will be on the track for Slamwise Gamgee. I said your name right that time. Nailed it. And Slamwise is off, going up against all four blockers. Now getting some offense from their friends, pushing up against one on the inside. And with a magic toast-up on the end, will become lead jammer on a power jam for Grand Raggedy, coming around for some points. Looking to get a little bit of offensive help from their friends, and they do so. Skidding up that outside line on those toast-ups yet again, pushing against that Denver tripod. A fight I am not jealous of. Cosmo, jammer for Denver, now back in from the penalty box and manages to unfortunately get another penalty and is headed back to the box. While Slamwise is still working towards the top, is now hit out and has to recycle back. Whoop. A little collision on the outside, it's okay. Slamwise pushing hard against that tripod, getting a little offensive help, but then being caught. And we'll get through for four points, four hard-earned points for Slamwise, and we'll call it off. Icing Cosmo in the box. Bring that score. Oh, go ahead. So sorry. Oh, my God. I was just going to say, Cosmo seems unfazed about being stuck in the box. Killing it. Pulling it off. Crying. To be under 30 again. What's that like? 237 for Bruising Altitude to 138 for Grand Raggedy. All right, we are starting with a power start, although Cosmo is standing in the box, which means that she has less than 10 seconds before she is released. Van Whalen trying to get lead before Cosmo comes in and makes things a little bit more difficult. Cosmo coming in hot at the back of the pack. Van Whalen pushing hard at the front, although Denver not making it easy. And Cosmo is able to make it out and get lead jammer. Van Whalen right behind her. We've seen this race a couple of times. We'll see, does Denver continue to run it or are they gonna score some points and call it? All right, Denver able to pull off one point before calling it off and moving on to the next jam. Coming out of the box and getting lead in one point, I call that a win. Nice. You just feel so sneaky whenever that happens. Looks like we are now getting a team timeout called for Grand Raggedy. Smart, again, you can't take it with you. You better use all of your team timeouts. That will be the second team timeout that Grand Raggedy has used. Denver still retaining two of their team timeouts. Grand Raggedy also does still have an official review, which again, you can either use as a review or as an extra timeout. For those of you that are new to roller derby, Me. I'm sure that the jammer penalties are very confusing. Sometimes they go to the box and they lose lead. Sometimes they get out of the box, they get lead. A little small explanation for that yeah. is that if a jammer starts in the box, starts the jam in the box, they are able to get out and get lead. If at any point during the jam they get a penalty, they lose the ability to be lead jammer even if they've already been assessed lead jammer. And then what happens? Power jam and a two minute jam. Hate it. 
Not my favorite. All right. But for this, we have no one in the penalty box. What? We do have Rat jamming for Denver. Going up against Lucy Morals. Rat, though, making quick work, running up that inside, and is now your lead jammer. Sassa Thrash, my apologies, is going to be the jammer for Grand Raggedy. Pushing up against the last two Denver blockers out on their initial, working hard to get around that last blocker, and is now out for their initial as Rat is coming up to score points for Denver. Rat working on that inside, getting hit out, having to come back in. And working on those points as Sassa Thrash, also now in the mix, working on some points of their own. Still no one in the penalty box. All four blockers for both teams are on the line. And Rat with a beautiful one-footed spin move is out for four points for Denver. Sassa Thrash pushing towards the top of that pack against the three Denver blockers. Now four Denver blockers for four points. <gasps> Rat, you're making me nervous with an amazing, a little spooky but unfortunately is going to get a penalty, a track cut penalty for that apex jump, and we'll have to head to the box, making this a two minute jam, cause she was lead and now she's not lead. Wah wah. We just talked about this. We just talked about this. So Sassa Thrash gets 30 seconds of uninterrupted jam time to push against the Denver four wall. Aren't you just so lucky? Thrash working with one offensive help on the top, now has one blocker to beat up top, one blocker to beat, and is now free from that blocker. That'll be four points on the board for Sassa Thrash, as Denver's pivot does unfortunately head to the penalty box as well. Sassa Thrash doing their best. Even though it's a power jam, it can still be exhausting. Rat now free from the penalty box, coming back onto the track, will attempt to start scoring points as soon as she hits that pack. Thrash working again on the top of that pack against that Denver tripod. Rat making quick work of that tripod, skittling up that inside line for four points for Denver. Rat now at eight points for Denver. Sass Thrash sitting at four. Jam will come to a conclusion. Eight points each for jam both jammers on that board. Denver still has their pivot standing in the penalty box. Ooh, I can do this math. It's a 100-point difference. 246 for Denver Bruising Altitude, 146 for Grand Raggedy. That is a smaller differential than the last couple of jams. So it is. Grand Raggedy closing it a little bit. We are down to the last 42 seconds of the game. We do have one Denver skater with six, which is one less than what you can have to be expelled. So. All right, Grand Raggedy out with lead jammer, Freddy Cruiser, looking to put some points on the board. Although Moose is out as well and scoring, able to get four points while Cruiser is still working in the pack. We have a Denver blocker in the box. Freddie decides to call it, giving the next jam a advantage. Grand Raggedy using one of their timeouts in order to stop the period clock at three seconds, which means we will have another jam. The score stands as Denver with 250 and Grand Raggedy with 148. Slam wise on the line for Grand Raggedy. Looks like Vinny for Denver. It's hot in here. I'm not even doing anything. All right, Vinny on the line for Denver. Lamb wise Gamgee for Grand Raggedy. One Denver blocker in the penalty box. And we will be resting on jam time alone as there are only three seconds left on the game clock for this game. And they are off. Vinny working quickly towards the front of the pack, but it's gonna be slam noise running up that inside line to get lead jammer status for Grand Raggedy. Much to the delight of their teammates. We got Vinny now free on their initial as well as Slamwise is coming up to score some points. 
Three Denver blockers on the track as of right now to try and slow them down, but no such luck. Slamwise is going to call off that jam. Getting all four points for Grand Raggedy. All right, so as of right now, unofficial scores, 250 bruising altitude, 152 for Grand Raggedy. We know it's not over until we get that final whistle. What do you call the whistle? Oh my God, I don't know. The final whistle? The last whistle? The rolling whistle? I mean, the rolling whistle. There you go. There it is. Official score, 250 to 152. Congrats to both teams on a hard played game. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you for the mixer. Take some time to cool down. Give some high fives to our teams that put so much work into this last game.